previously on Sights to See. Hey, everybody! Hey! So, uh, first full day in China. We are here at the Forbidden City. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site dating back to the Ming Dynasty. Oh, wow. There's the top of Jingshan Park right there. Oh, nice. Chimney Jillikers. Hey, here at uh, Xingshan Park, uh, the highest point here in the park, and behind me you can see is the Forbidden City, which is a massive complex. We walked through all of that today and uh, made our way up here, and you can get a perspective on just how huge the place is. Um, we still have the Temple of Heaven today and Tiananmen Square, and uh, just China's pretty awesome so far. This is day one, and we're having a blast. Good morning. Yeah. That's actually a good night. Yeah, well, I guess I, for them, for I, us, yeah. I slept good. <coughs> but yesterday was yesterday was a long day. But good. Oh yeah. I think we saw that we walked about eight, ten miles yesterday. No, no, no. Last time I looked at my thing it was fifteen point nine and that was when we were leaving Temple of Heaven. So we put in some miles yesterday. And uh, today, what is it, six in the morning? Mm -hmm. Six in the morning on Thursday. We uh, negotiated with a uh, guy at the desk down there who's in charge of doing these tour groups and stuff. We were like, man, we don't want to be a part of that tour group and everything. And he was like, well, I'm off tomorrow and I'll do it for you. So we negotiated a price. This is like an hour and a half drive out to the uh, Great Wall. So we'll be doing that all out uh, today. All right now we're gonna go get some breakfast, get some fuel in us for the day, because we got another long one. I'm sure we'll probably put in almost as many miles today on these feet, so. All right, man. Cool, let's do this. All right, so. Our guide dropped us off in the middle of nowhere on the side of a mountain. So the way that he's taking us, we have to go up this mountain here. You can see the Great Wall right there. We're gonna get up there. We're coming in about four miles past the actual entrance. So I don't even know if we're, I don't even think we're gonna have to pay. We're just like sneaking in. This is the guy, the way the guy told us to go. And then we get to walk it, we'll walk back down and exit through the entrance where he'll pick us up later in the day. So, you know, it took us a little while to get here. We got lost a bunch, but now we're like, this is definitely an adventure. We are in the middle of nowhere and I don't even know what to expect when we get up here, because this isn't, like I said, this isn't like an entrance. We're, we're like scaling the Great Wall, like straight up. Yes, doing the Great Wall. Awesome start to the day. We are, co we are coming, I already shared, we came in in this little sideway, flew the drone up and got some great aerial shots. I mean, stunning. Look at this. We got sheer drops and cliffs and views for miles. It's kind of hard to pick up on film because of the smog, but I mean, and this is the this is the part of the Great Wall that's like not restored. So we're walking over like broken down parts and everything, and uh, we're gonna get up. I mean, as we go, it's just gonna get more and more impressive. So we're just gonna try to keep from injuring ourselves today. Exploring all these Great Wall tunnels. Who knew that this would be under certain sections of the wall? <laughs> this is really cool. Loving this. Man. <clears throat> and look at that. The Great Wall stretches on for almost 9,000 kilometers. It's broken up into various sections you can visit, but I'm, I'm really glad we found our way here. It is absolutely mind-blowing to see this in person. That's straight up. Dude, what? I gotta take another breather just to wrap my brain around this. <laughs> I'm going up that thing. Have fun. <laughs> dropped off at a really really cool part and by the way just to give you a little heads up I am in a much better mood than I was like an hour or two ago 
but our driver took us out to this one spot. We went up and it was really cool, but the direction he told us to go to was a complete opposite way from where we were trying to go. We went miles in the wrong direction. Luckily, we ran into some uh, locals. Hey, ni hao. Ni hao. Paid them for a ride back here. So the day isn't over, it's just longer than we expected. It is what it is. So we were on the wall and uh, we did quite a bit of it and it was awesome. We got some great footage of that, but uh, we didn't get to go to the main, this main area that we were trying to do, Muten Yu. But we did make it over here to the Sacred Way, which is part of the Ming tombs. And uh, yeah, we got here after they closed, but they let us in. We, we were able to talk them into letting us in. We got the uh, drone up, so we got some cool footage. And uh, this tomb, as amazing as it is, is actually only one of several here in Beijing. 13 in total, I think. Only three of them are open to the public, but this one is more like a really nice park. You can see people running around and having a good time. There are probably 80 to 100 statues lining the sides of this place. Some were animals, some were people. They were all super cool. The detail on them is stunning. And it's hard to believe that this place has been here since the 1540s, something like that. At the end of the path is the main pavilion. It houses a massive steel. It's the emperor's tombstone. It's been carried here by a biji. It's the great dragon turtle god used as a base in pretty much all of the various emperor's tombs around China. As you can see, every inch of this thing is covered in more detail work and according to most local legends, the reason they used this particular shape was to literally carry this massive grave marker, but also to metaphorically carry the massive list of merits and virtues this emperor did. It's been carved on the front. Overall, it's, it really is just an amazing, very cool place. Now we're just making our way through the rain back to the other end of the uh, sacred way here and where our driver is waiting where he's waiting carry us we'll home. get back to the hotel and get on for the next day tomorrow I feel like somebody beat me up after yesterday yeah finished in Beijing and we are on our way to Xi'an we have a four hour train ride ahead of us and um, but when we get there we're doing the Maoli Mausoleum and this pyramid that I've been really excited about seeing that they have covered with dirt, planted trees on top of. I don't know why they're hiding this pyramid, but we're gonna go see it. And, and get that drone up there. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited about that because this place, when I try to look it up online, there's not a whole lot of video of it that people have. It's just like a lot of mystery around it. So hopefully I can bring a little light to what's that, what that's all about. It only takes about four hours to cross the 700 miles between Beijing and Xi'an on a high-speed train. Buy your tickets online, pick them up at the station, and settle in for a nice smooth ride, especially if you're still super worn out from the day before, just like we were. All right, so yeah, we um, got here in Xi'an today, and um, right off the bat, we were blown away by like visually how impressive everything was. We came right up into the old city, and uh, the fortifications were all around us. It was awesome. Checked into our hotel, no problems there. Headed over to the um, Muslim marketplace. Mm -hmm. It was awesome, had some good food. If you like um, really gross eggs, I say gross, but you know, it was just weird. It was very unique and um, <laughs> I ate almost all of it. I mean, it was like a four by four block radius of street vendor after street vendor after street vendor yes. desserts foods meats vegetables and the smells like we were just like over overwhelmed with like all the smells and the sights and everything and spices and everything was so unique it was really cool um, walking around through there trying the different food um, seeing everybody working and stuff it was a really fun lively atmosphere yeah. everybody was real friendly oh yeah and now we're on our way out to the Maoling Mausoleum. We hope, we feel like we got the uh, the message across. Uh huh. To to our uh, in our taxi here. I'm definitely paying attention to where we're going, <laughs> just in case. But um, you know, I, I think we got the message across. We're heading out to Maoling Mausoleum, where uh, they have another one of those big pyramids that we really want to see. 
and, and I think it's going to be really cool. It's an emperor buried out there. He was the guy who started the Silk Road. I mean, there's so much history at this one place. And there's wives, courtesans, all kinds of stuff buried within this one complex. So I think it's going to be yep. really cool. And down the road from that is the pyramid that I've been wanting to see forever. Um, it's a huge pyramid complex. It's covered with dirt and trees. But it's there. We're going to um, try to get some footage of that. And we're coming back to Xi'an tonight, hopefully to check out some of the fortifications. We're staying inside of the old part of Xi'an today. And so we're looking forward to doing that, hopefully get some uh, some of the nightlife. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you later. I am extremely excited about this place. These are the kind of moments that I live for. And uh, getting out here has been an adventure in and of itself. And now we're here, we get to experience this. Maoling Mausoleum was part of the Han Dynasty. And um, it's a complex, um, the largest tomb on site is dedicated to Emperor Wu. And um, there's tombs all up and down it, apparently. One for his, was for his favorite concubine, another one for, his, uh, for a general strategist. And there's a bunch of them going down like that for special people from the time period. So apparently we're gonna be able to go inside too and look at about, I don't know, something like 4,100 artifacts and all sorts of different relics and things from the uh, time period back then. Um, really excited to see that. A lot of these places have like really cool rock structures and gardens and stuff and it looks like we're walking into that here. So follow us. The first thing you'll notice when you come in is this huge pond structure. It has this massive stone feature in the middle of it surrounded by this garden, and the pond itself is absolutely stuffed with koi that people can feed. But what we were looking for was just around the corner, our very first pyramid. So this is the tomb of Jin Di. Obviously it's overgrown, but it's like a little small pyramid. They called it the satellite pyramid because it's offset from the main uh, pyramid. And supposedly a lot of these tombs that are still left unexcavated are because they just don't have the technology to preserve the items once they come out. Yeah, very interesting. There's a much larger pyramid down the road that we're gonna see here eventually. Maybe there'll be some information on that. I did see an entrance over there. All right, let's check out the good stuff. Display of choice relics. Oh yeah, this is gonna be the good stuff. Inside was a light show map of the entire area and dozens and dozens of relics dug up from, I'm guessing, what pyramids they could. It really does make you wonder about what's still left under the other ones. There are also huge statues here that kind of look like animals, but it looks more like people just lined out whatever cool shapes they saw on the original rock, which is still amazing. And speaking of amazing, uh, dude, this thing is huge. It's a big pyramid underneath all this. It's part of this whole complex, the uh, Maoli Mausoleum and everything else. It's all around here, and uh, it's absolutely breathtaking. This pyramid's the tomb of Emperor Wu, like I said earlier, and it's one of the largest in China. This pyramid honors a man who unified a nation, and he also opened the Silk Road. It's absolutely incredible. And it is another item scratched off my bucket list. The next day, we visited the Terracotta Army. Looks like this, the complex is going to be pretty big. So there's the Museum to Emperor Qin and three massive pits. Each one has warriors inside. Pit 1 is the largest and the most uncovered. And to learn more, go check out the Points of Interest video we made on it. Links are in the description below. The complex was incredible and you really don't want to miss it. So, um, looks like we've done the, um, the whole place and Wow, what an experience. I mean, like, you know, seeing this stuff on film or on TV or whatever, but like being here in person is completely different. Yeah, so when you exit here, you get funneled out to little, little tourist areas and shops and stuff. It's a good place to get some food or a cold drink. If you're here during the summertime, uh, it's pretty hot out. So sitting down and getting one of these fruit juices might be the way to go, which I think is what I'm gonna try right now. All right, hey, we're back at uh, Jian North Station. We got the Terracotta Army done today. And now we're making our way through the, um, over to our train. I mean, their, their, their train stations here are like airports, basically. I mean, bigger than airports in the States. But it's the easiest way to get around. And it was actually pretty easy getting our tickets. I internet, if you have internet, that is key over here. Eight, three, three, has been stopped. 
We had an hour train ride to Washon, and our first class train ride turned into a first class bus ride to make our way up the mountain. We got a bus all to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and we're pretty sure we're going to the right place. But uh, yeah, we're here at Washon, and um, we're going to try to uh, do that plank walk today. I'm looking forward to it, anyways. Hey, we're kind of at the midway point, I think, about to hop the cable car, get up to the top here. We're in kind of like a, I don't know, like a little touristy village spot. But uh, the mountains and the views are amazing. We're not even close to the top yet, so. Mm, we've got several hours of hiking, walking ahead of us. And uh, we gotta get to our hotel, plug some electronics and equipment in. Um, Pretty exciting stuff. You can't really see from where we're at now, but there's this trail that goes up this other peak. <laughs> Going up that. This just looks like it's almost straight up. And uh, we have to go up that to get to where we're going. <laughs> well, I say we made it about two thirds of the way. We're almost there. Cheers. <laughs> Dude. This is incredible. And we're, there's way more to go too. Damn. So this right here is uh, Hawkbeak Cliff. Um, it's got a cool monument up here. Um, all of the cliff sides are covered with these, which are really cool. The locks can be found all over Washon. You can buy them here on the mountain and have them engraved for love, luck, or other good fortunes. It's hard to tell when the tradition started, but some of the locks here are hundreds of years old. The views are amazing. Um, if you lean over here where I'm at, you can almost get straight down. This is probably one of the coolest places I've ever been. I knew I was gonna be, I was really gonna be blown away by this place, but I didn't expect it to like drop up to the top of my lists of places to, that are just truly breathtaking. Whoa. Huh. Look at this, there's even more, it just keeps going. Luckily, the East Peak was also where our hotel was, and after walking most of the way up this mountain, we were ready to put our feet up for a bit. So we check in, found our room, and well, it, it wasn't great. Um, we stayed in some small rooms before, but we were stuffed into this one, you guys. So, <laughs> back out on the trail. Okay, buddy, gotta walk up that. We got a bit more walking to do. These peaks are no joke. Separated from each other. And uh, we're running out of daylight. And we're heading up now to the tallest peak of the five sacred peaks in this mountain. This south peak is the height. Yeah, 7,000 something. 7,092. Which isn't like a monster, but we're trying to do it on time. We just got here late in the day and we're trying to squeeze as much in because tomorrow we've got the plank walk and we don't know what to expect in terms of lines or... Duration. Mm-hmm. Before long, we had found it. The plank walk in the sky. People come from all over the world to hike around the meter-wide planks suspended over the South Peak and I wanted in. There was just one little problem. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow? Is it open tomorrow? Uh, oh, fuck. Yes. Man. America? To China. For this. Okay. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> It's easier. She, she. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. I, I was really looking forward to doing that. Um, that sucks. That really sucks, dude. 
Yeah, I'm kind of... Kind of speechless. I mean, yeah. you know, it's not the first time, like, something like this has happened on a trip. But, uh, where I, I wasn't able to do, like, the one thing that I wanted to do. So, I mean, it's familiar territory, but it still sucks. The plank walk looks amazing. Um, we're here. We worked really hard to get here. And uh, it's closed. And it's closed tomorrow. So, um, you know, we're going to explore the rest of the mountain, make the most of it, and, uh, and see what else there is to see, get that drone up in the air and catch some good footage. Uh, but, I, you know, definitely a little disappointed. But, all, you know, all that means is it just means uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to come back. So. Luckily, the mountain had one more surprise for us. So right now I'm waiting in line to do this trail. And going down that, all the way out to the edge there. That's right, there was another most dangerous hike in China, located right next to our hotel. It takes you out to the very precipice of a little outshoot of the mountain. It was pretty full while we were there, I'm guessing because the other plank walk was closed, but man, this walk was incredible. Like, scaling down a straight cliff and up some narrow paths, people were taking amazing photographs all around, and when we made our way out to the little pagoda there uh, with this group of people, from this vantage point, I got some of the most amazing views of the entire area. It was truly breathtaking, and I am so happy that I got the chance to experience something like this. And we made it all the way back over to the West Peak, just in time for sunset. Wow. Dude, today was some hiking. Uh, it was so impressive, though. Like, all of this was amazing. As you can tell, I'm a little beat, but uh, I'm really happy to be here. And we're catching the sunset. We're looking at something we've never seen. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a sun like that. So, we are done with Huashan. We uh, got here yesterday and have had an amazing time. You know, there was one disappointment. Plank Road was uh, shut down, and I was really looking forward to doing that. But um, got to do another precarious trekking bit and now we're headed out and as you can see like the views here have been spectacular it is just amazing what we've been able to experience while we've been here on this trip um the people have been friendly everybody's been interesting getting to know us and just as the rest of the trip has gone everybody's been wanting to touch me <laughs> and i don't know if over here tattoos are done differently and they're like feel different or something but um I, th I feel very exotic in a foreign land. So we're getting out of here. We got a bit of rest ahead of us because we've still got over a week of travels ahead. Never have I ever expected to so quickly fall in love with the country, its people, and the places that I've been able to visit. On this part of the trip, we have seen the Great Wall, Mao Ling's Mausoleum, Terracotta Army, and Hua Shan. And every single one of them have stood out in some unique way. We've thoroughly enjoyed this part of the trip and sharing it with you. Stick around because on part three, we'll be sharing with you the Lashan Jayat Buddha, Imishan, Yangshan Quarry, Longyu Caves, and the Ming Tomb. Quite a bit packed into uh, part three there for you. And make sure to follow us on social media. The support that we've been getting lately has been overwhelming. So make sure to like, subscribe and share if you can it helps the channel out a lot we've enjoyed bringing this episode to you and stick around for the next one which will be coming out very soon thanks so much for watching see you guys next time